These are just a few examples of uh, what Cavalry can do, a new player in the world of motion graphics. Think of Cavalry as an application that uh, combines the qualities of After Effects, MoGraph and Apple's Motion. Let's see it in more detail. Cavalry comes from the creators of MASH, the Maya alternative of MoGraph. The beta was released a few days ago and of course I had to give it a try. I must say I wasn't disappointed. This application has some real potential. It's basically MoGraph but for two dimensions. It's incredible how much your, of your knowledge you can transfer from uh, MoGraph and Cinema 4D to Cavalry. Once you figure out the basics, you will feel right at home. In a matter of minutes you will get how the application works and you will be able to create a piece of animation. I created the examples you saw at the beginning in just a couple of hours. The way the program works makes sense and it's obvious that it's created by people who understand the field and also know what users need. Let's see how the application works. When you first open the app you will be greeted by a familiar interface. It looks like a cleaner version of After Effects. In the top left we have our composition area. This is where we create new compositions and organize our compositions into folders. Right below this area we have the Attributes Editor. This is where you will spend most of your time in. It's basically the equivalent of the Attributes Manager in Cinema 4D. Any adjustments on your object attributes will happen here. So once I add a couple of objects, you will see the settings of these objects populate the editor. They are nicely organized into tabs and if you want to declutter the interface, which you will often want to do, you can either fold the specific palette or what I always do, just close the unimportant ones. That leaves more room for the object you're working on at the moment and if you need to, you can always bring back those palettes by double clicking on an object. There are different uh, view options for these palettes. For example, if I press uh, this button here, the attributes will change whenever I click on a different object. This is exactly how Cinema 4D works, but I actually prefer the default way Cavalry works. And that's uh, stacking multiple object attributes at the same time. This also makes uh, connecting attributes together much easier. But more on that later on. This of course is the timeline, where we basically keyframe our animations. Finally we have the viewport area here, and some color options to the right of the viewport. The interface is very simple and I would say it's exactly what is needed without any unnecessary interface elements uh, cluttering your screen. Now the million dollar question, why is Cavalry exciting? It's basically because of the way we animate objects. We can drive an object's value with a value from another object. Let's draw a rectangle to see how that works. Let's say I want to adjust its scale. We can do it manually with uh, keyframes, but we can also use expressions which are called behaviors here. So I'll add an oscillator behavior and I will just link it to the scale of the rectangle. And just like that, the rectangle gets smaller and bigger on its own. We can change the scaling amount and how fast the effect happens just by adjusting the settings in the oscillator tab. Super easy to do. Now let's create something slightly more complex. Let's create a grid of circles that change in color and size. Like in MoGraph, we just need to draw a circle and add it to a cloner. Even the shortcut is the same. By clicking Alt and pressing this button here, we create a grid based on the selected object. We have multiple options for the distribution, but we will settle for the grid option. Now let's create the path of the effect. I'm going to add a rectangle and animate its position. I'm not going to bother too much with the keyframes, we just need something to work with and we can always refine later on. Now we need to create the other two effects, the color change and the scaling. For the color change we will use a color blend behavior. This will add a gradient that will be used for coloring the circles and to cycle their colors. We'll connect that to the fill color option and now the circles are colored. At the moment we only see one color. To get the circles to change colors we need to add a fall off. As you can see so far it's nothing complex and something that we've done a million times before in cinema. 
Now all we need to do is have the fall off follow the path of the rectangle. To do that we just need to connect the position of the rectangle to the position of the fall off. Done and done. So far so good. Now for the size change. We will add an oscillator behavior and we will use that to define the size of the bigger circles. The oscillator can cycle between two sizes. We could use that to add more variation to the animation, but for now let's just have one size. So I'll put the same value in the minimum and maximum fields. To add this value to the ellipse, all we need to do is connect the behavior to the radius of the ellipse. Of course now everything has the same size. Like before, we're missing a fall off. Once we add that, we get the effect we're after. Some circles are small and others are big. Now we need to connect the position of the fall off to the rectangle's path. We do that by simply connecting the two values. That's all there is to it. The effect is now complete and it just took us a couple of minutes to set up. Now if we don't like the path of the animation, we can just quickly edit a few keyframes and all of our effects will follow. If there's one thing you can take out of this simple demo is this. We can easily create complex animations just by using parameters from one object to drive parameters of another object. It's how you would do it in MoGraph and it's exactly how you do it in Cavalry. The examples you saw at the beginning were built in a similar fashion. In this one we just have a bunch of circles colored through the use of a gradient and they're just deformed by noises. And that is it. Zero keyframes and probably just a couple of minutes in total to set up. By adjusting the noise and the frequency we can get different types of deformation and faster or slower deformation. This one was also very simple to set up. The line deforms as the circle moves and then we just use a cloner to create a more complex effect. To complete the look, I just duplicated this uh, cloner and changed the thickness of the lines and the total amount of lines. These examples just barely scratch the surface. We can do a lot more complex effects with uh, cavalry. There are some limitations, but if you have a piece of animation in mind, chances are you will be able to recreate it in cavalry. Cavalry is still in beta, so not everything is in its final polished uh, state. For example, the text tool. If you want to consistently crash the app, adjust any of the text options, especially the size of the text. At least that's the case on the Mac. On PC, it might be different. Another issue I faced was with uh, color labels. Labels are great for grouping your elements together and making your uh, setups readable, but sometimes the color of the label seems to also change the color of the object. I'm sure this is not an intended behavior, so be aware of that when you're using the app. I also had some uh, issues with uh, rotated objects and effects falloffs. It seems that when an object is rotated, the X and Y positions of falloffs are flipped. For example here, I have a bunch of lines being deformed by this noise. The falloff should be right over the deformation, but as you can see it's in a completely different area. Once I rotate the cloner, the falloff gets correctly aligned over the deformation. Even if this is the way it's supposed to work, I'm still counting it as a bug. The other issue I had was with the manual. Uh, some things have entries and examples, but a lot of functions are not documented yet, so most of the time you need to figure things out on your own. I'm also a little bit hesitant with the performance of the application. I never managed to get a real-time playback even with those simple examples. I was always hovering around 20 to 23 FPS, so I can only imagine how slower things can get with lots of objects and effects stacked on top of one another. I hope there are still a lot of optimizations planned for the future. And then there's rendering. The first time I tried to render out the animations, I decided to switch to JPEGs instead of PNGs. And the result I got was this. Initially I thought it was because I selected to render with OpenGL instead of a CPU, but the results were the same in both cases. If you switch to PNGs, things render correctly. But unfortunately the colors seem to be a little bit more washed out than uh, what I'm seeing in the viewport here. I thought it might be a color profile issue, but there are no settings for a color profile, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. I also had uh, crashes when uh, trying to switch from CPU to GPU when the PNG format is selected. It seems like the order of things uh, changing was triggering the crashes. 
once I selected the items in a different order, things stopped crashing. <laughs> I know, it's weird. All these issues though don't take away from the fact that Cavalry is a very promising application. It's still in beta, so at this stage of the application's development cycle, issues like these are expected. So we can cut the developers some slack. The fundamentals of Cavalry are solid, but I think there are some things that could be improved in the future. For example, falloffs. It seems that each behavior and noise has to have its own falloff. It would be nice if one falloff could be shared by all of our objects. It would make setups much simpler and easier to manage. I would also love to see reference objects. At the moment, if we want to create effects like glows or other overlaid effects, you need to basically duplicate your objects. So when it comes time to make adjustments, we need to make those adjustments twice. Having the ability to use references would make this task so much easier. Cavalry also suffers from the same MoGraph problems. Your setups can become difficult to read, especially if you open the file after a while. It will take you a minute or two to figure out what influences what. And of course, things will get much harder if you're not taking care of giving your objects proper names. Seeing the connections of objects through these arrows and also by using labels helps a lot in understanding your setups, but I wonder if there's another way to visualize them. I feel we need a top-down view that displays the connections a little bit clearer. I would also like to see a lot more noises. Cinema 4D has a ton of noises that allow you to create very complex effects, but at the moment in Cavalry we only have a few available and we don't have the amount of control available in Cinema. If we could have something like that inside Cavalry, that would open up an incredible amount of possibilities. So my closing thoughts. Cavalry already shows a lot of promise. I feel it's headed in the right direction and I hope the development will continue for years to come. It's so encouraging to see new products in the motion graphics arena, so I have only good things to say about Cavalry. If you haven't tried it already, I would encourage you to do so. It's definitely worth testing out. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts. What do you think about uh, Cavalry? Do you think it's gonna be the next best thing? Are you planning to use it in your own work? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, with that, we reached the end of this video. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.